Do you need polytunnels and greenhouses? Nope. Do you need fancy propagators, bench propagators, windowsill propagators? Nah. -uh. Well, how about lights? Do you need those? Not really. So I'm just outside the front of my plot here and spinning round down to here is another plot. These beds here were made by a gentleman a couple of years ago and a young mum and her kids has just taken this over and she wants to grow strawberries and a few veggies. Now you can see there's nothing on this plot except for those beds. The ground near the bottom towards the river there is covered but she hasn't got a greenhouse or a polytunnel. She hasn't even got a shed yet to be able to store tools on site. Um, so she hasn't got all these extras, the, the propagators, the greenhouses, the lights, she hasn't got all that. But she will still get a crop out of this plot this year, simply by using what she's got here, which are these beds. You can see there's already one been dug over. Uh, and it's a work in progress, this plot, and it will be for the next couple of years. Let's go back to the warmth of my polytunnel and uh, we'll talk a little bit more. Now, back when I was a youngster, there were not so many greenhouses around and if you got one and put it up, the call would come over the garden fence from the, one of your neighbours saying, oh, you're growing tomatoes, are you? Because that's what they were associated with at that time. And uh, you certainly didn't have propagators. They were, they were for the elite. They were for the people who were growing for showing or exhibition growers or specialist growers, nurseries, those sorts of things. They weren't there for the consumer market and we never used them. And in, in point of fact, things, that, were, that you would need heat for, such as tomatoes, cucumbers, you wouldn't sow them till May, because back then you could guarantee that the, the summer season would run from sort of late April all the way up to the end of September, and a little bit beyond as well. And we had guaranteed sunny weather then, and, and summers, full-blown summers, right the way through, uh, with just the odd touch of rain here and there. And that was how things used to be. I say, we, you didn't sow a seed until May, but as time's moved on, things have, things have come on. Cheap greenhouses have got cheaper. Polytunnels have come onto the market. Propagation devices have. And in the last five or six years, there's been a massive proliferation of these um, LED lights. Because the technology is so much cheaper, they're able to make them cheaper. But it doesn't mean that they are cheaper because some of them are a couple of hundred pounds. And then with the prices of energy, especially at the moment here in the UK, they're going to be blooming expensive to run. So do bear that in mind. Now, the young mum in their plot just across the car park there that I just showed you, she's got some nice raised beds ready made and she started to cover them with cardboard. This is a good example of being wary about what you actually start and where you intend to start off with your gardening. Because... She'd gone on Charlie Dowding's uh, channel, seen online about his no dig, looked at it and thought, that's the way I want to go. And she started covering the ground with cardboard, which is the right thing to do. Until she found out about the cost of the compost to cover all those beds with, which was going to be, for her, on a tight budget, prohibitive. She could start small, of course, and, and grow that, and I've suggested that to her. And that's what that big pallet thing was across the pot there I managed to get hold of for her. I'll build her a compost heap, and all the rough stuff that she's cutting down and digging out will go on the compost heap, and she can start that process off. But it takes time, and that's what you've got to do. So when you're starting off, first of all, you've got a diggy plot over you. You've got to get used to what you're doing and plant within the boundaries of what you've got. If that means that you've got to wait till May to start planting seeds directly into the ground, then that's what you have to do. Now, I'm very fortunate. I've got this big polytunnel and I've got another one over there and another one out the back, but I've been doing this for quite some time now. It's my hobby, I enjoy it and I grow year round. And you, yes, you can do that quite easily, but it's gonna cost you a lot of money if you want to do it instantly. And this is the danger of coming and looking at uh, YouTube channels and websites and magazines is just about every single one of them, the people that are featured in there will have a greenhouse, will have a polytunnel, propagators, even lights. And I've got all those things, but I don't, like, I don't use the lights. Uh, it's some, something I don't do at the moment. But 
it's it slows things that you start looking and you're thinking, well, to grow all these plants that I want to grow, I'm going to need all this. And then you start buying the things that you think you need. And you can get yourself into a bit of a pickle. Now, this polytunnel behind me is one of the cheapest on the market. They're nicknamed blowaways, and for good reason as well. They do literally blow away. There was a plot over there, and they had a, a polytunnel on it. Now, across down the way there, there's a river, farmer's fields, and then there's a busy main road. And the last time his tunnel was seen was the other side of that road over there. It literally, the wind gusted, picked it up, and blew it away. The whole thing, the cover, the frame, the lot went. So you've got to anchor these down. This one I've put up on boards, it's raised, so I've got the height in there that I can grow tomatoes and cucumbers. They're actually much lower, they're not much taller than me when they're, when they're up. So something to bear in mind, I say that cost about £150. Um, and that's the biggest of that size, it's 10 foot wide, 20 foot long. And there are many that are sort of 10 foot wide and sort of 12 foot long. And when you put it up and you stood in it for the first time, you think, great, this is a massive space. And it will look like that when it's empty. But if you put a potting bench in there, a couple of bags of compost and a few pots and trays, it's full. And you've bought the wrong size because you started at the wrong time and you've assessed that you think you need a tunnel and you've gone ahead and bought one. And then later on, you're thinking, I wish I'd bought a bigger one. And this is the thing I'm trying to get over is to don't rush in and spend your money straight away. Have a good think about it. Start digging your plot over, developing it. Learn to plant and sow seeds directly into the soil and move on from that gradually all the time. You can't go straight in at it and end up with, like me, with this massive tunnel here full of food year round. You have to gradually chip away at it, learn, watch uh, and understand what you're doing before you can get there and spend your money wisely. Now, propagators are very handy and they're very, very convenient and I use them to get seeds germinated. I just want them to start growing and then I'll take those plants out away from that propagator, pot them on and keep them somewhere protected. And this is key um, because it, it moves plants on through the propagator and means you can get more plants started. But again, you don't need a propagator and, and I've done the following in the past. Just have seed trays with your seeds in and stack them up in your kitchen because it's perfect temperature in there. You never heat it at a kitchen too much. It's, it tends to be more your living rooms and your bedrooms where you'll put the, the heating on where it's comfortable through the winter. But in a, in a kitchen, it's, it's warm enough to get seeds germinated and get them started. It's just after them where you need to find somewhere where you can keep those young plants safe and cosseted before it's ready to plant them out. Also with lights, you don't need lights. I've got a light, I did a review on one a couple of years ago and I've got one at home. It's never been out of the box since, to be honest. I mean, I don't use them. Now I'm very far north here. We have a very limited season, we're very dark for most of the year, and I could use it, and I would get better plants, but that's the difference is, with a light, you will get much better plants, but you don't need it. Not to my mind, if I can grow plants up here well and grow and crop and get harvest from them, then I don't think you need lights in the UK. I think it's just because the market has been flooded with them uh, from, let's say, the, the Chinese sector of the world. Um, there are lots of giveaways and things, and the market has literally been flooded with them. I don't think they need lights, I really don't. I say it makes better plants, but especially now when uh, we all know that here in the UK, fuel prices are gonna skyrocket and the bills are gonna double for a lot of people. Using that electricity to heat something that you don't really need is, to my mind, nonsense really that's just it if you're using lights and you, you will get better plants and you'll get better production um, and fair play to you but for me, it's not for me and in general my advice is that you don't need them just use what mother nature provides lovely sunny day today here in february <laughs> so your seeds are germ germinated and you're taking them off either the windowsill or off the trays that were stacked on the kitchen floor. They will take longer to germinate that way, but they will come off. You'll pot them on, where do you plant them? Well, there's a simple idea, just a couple of water pipe hoops and a piece of plastic thrown over. Now you can either buy a piece of plastic, 
relatively cheap off somewhere like eBay for a couple of quid. And it doesn't have to be thick poly, polytunnel plastic, the expensive stuff. Any stuff will do and it will set you up for a couple of years. Or even better than that, you can go to a furniture shop where things come wrapped in plastic and they generally throw them out in the bins at the back, just last nicely, and I'm sure they'll sort you out a big piece. So again, it's keeping the cost down and getting you started just until, for the first couple of years, until you can assess what actually you do need and what you want to buy. You could do the same thing with a few pallets. Just nail three pallets together in a U-shape standing up, cover the whole thing in a sheet of plastic or a, a piece of plastic, a, a three-piece suite arrived in or a bed or something, and you've got a ready-made temporary greenhouse. And that's the thing, it's enough to get you through those first couple of years until you finally decide what you want to buy and before you spend your money possibly in the wrong areas. And that's key. So these polytunnels allow me to grow the warmer crops through the summer, things like the aubergines, peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, melons, all those sorts of things, and a few herbs and other bits and bobs as well. And, and that's great. And a lot of those, if you buy the right variety, if you'd spend some time looking and reading the back of the seed packet or the information on the website, a lot of these you can, in warm or sheltered spots, you can grow outside. As I say, decades ago, that's how we used to do it. I've grown all of those crops outside without protection through my lifetime at, at some stage. And it, it does work, you just need to give them protection. And that's what you want to learn first, is all about protecting plants out there in the soil, because that'll stand you well for moving forward when you've got a space like this, you know, which is marvellous, you know. I, I love every morning I come in here and I see green and I think this is absolutely fantastic and it, uh, yeah, makes me very, very happy. There's another thing as well, with a lot of YouTubers out there, most of them have got a polytunnel or a greenhouse, propagators, lights, light tents even I've seen, and, and that's all well and good. But when you're seeing that on that video, don't be thinking, that's what I've got to go and get now, that's what I've got to go and spend the money on. Look back to the first videos they produced and nine times out of 10, you'll see just an empty space and you'll see that plot or that garden develop over a period of time. Not everyone has all these things straight away. You build on it year on year on year. So do be aware of those things. It's not something you've got to go wham and spend hundreds of pounds on straight away and get after it, because you don't. <laughs> So out the back of the plot here, I've kept most of this ground covered here. This has been partially covered most of the winter because this is going to be under development in the next couple of weeks. It's all going to be dug over and manipulated, beds put in, and I can use this area better next year. So that's my first tip to you, is to work methodically. Cover the area you're going to dig, or that you fully intend to dig, to stop weeds in the track. And then once you've dug over a little bit, then you move on and uncover a bit of ground but you cover the ground you just dug so that the weeds aren't grown behind you as you work along and through your plot. Then you can run through it with a rake or a hoe and keep it clear of weeds for that full season. Which leads me into my second tip, is to hoe every day with a wire in it. Which basically means as soon as you see a weed, hoe them off. It takes nothing and the whole of the front of my plot I can hoe in about half an hour during the summer because I do it regularly. If I let the weeds grow, I'm looking at hours and hours of work weeding. So that's my first, second tip is hoe every day with a Y in it. Now, here on this site, there's about 40 plots. And the majority of these people have been here for years and they've got vast amounts of experience. So one of the first things you want to do is to go around and introduce yourself to as many people as you can and grill them, basically. And they won't mind telling you what they grow, how they grow it, what they can and can't do things to be aware of in the local area, pests, weed, problems that might be available. And that's vital information for you. The more you can get, the better. And you'll find that once people know that you're new and that you're keen, people will come down and they might even put a spade in the ground for you for half an hour, come and give you a hand. Or they might give you some plastic, for instance, to cover these hoops we were talking about earlier. These things are, are vital. And if you're in a home garden situation, you can ask your neighbours, see what they grow. And you'll soon find someone in your local area that grows a lot of fruit and veg, or cut flowers, or whatever they're growing. And you'll make new friends from it, and you'll gain tons and tons of information that would take you a long time to, to learn by your own mistakes. You're learning by your own mistakes anyway, but 
if you've got that information at your fingertips, it's 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 massive. It really is. So that's that's another tip for you: is get out and meet the people around you. Just go and say hello and see what you can learn. Now, all the things I've told you, don't go ahead and buy straight away. I have. And that's because this is my hobby and this is what I prefer to spend my money on, where I prefer, where I prefer to spend my time and what I prefer to, to do. And I do it almost on a daily basis, five, six days a week. And that pleases me enormously to be able to bring home fresh produce, fresh flowers, herbs for, the, for dinners. And, you know, I come down here and I see people, I get a bit of exercise, I get fresh air and sunlight, so it's all a good thing. But do take some time to just think before you go ahead and start buying polytunnels and greenhouses, propagators and lights, think about what you're trying to achieve first. If you want to grow those hot weather plants like cucumbers, tomatoes, melons, those sorts of things, you're going to need a greenhouse eventually, but don't, don't rush into it. Go through at least a season first, get your plot dug over, get the information and find out what you can achieve in your area. Little by little and you'll learn a bit You'll get some advice and you'll get some help. And just remember that all those YouTube gardeners out there that have all this gear, they all started with nothing and they struggled at first as well. And they've learned and moved on and they've built their garden to match their skill level and what they want to do. Much the same as I have here, you know, that's, um, this is what makes me happy. So it's good. But there you go. Just a little bit of advice for those first time gardeners and those people who are trying to germinate seeds at home. Just put them on your kitchen floor and you'll, they will germinate. It'll take a little bit longer. Your plants will be a little bit smaller, but you'll learn from it and you will get a crop and a harvest this year. Anyway, that's it for today. Look after yourselves everyone. Take care. Stay safe. See you all very, very soon. Toronto. <laughs>